I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, the Monday, October 16th uh, meeting of the uh, Pembroke Board of Selectmen. And we'll start with a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we do have a couple announcements. Uh, the first one, uh, Ed Thorne won't be here tonight. Um, his brother passed away uh, down in South Carolina, so he'll be down there uh, for the next few days, unfortunately. Um, Dan, you have an announcement? For yes, I have a, a report from Mike Valente on the Household Hazardous Waste Day that was held this past Sunday. Uh, the town contracted with Stericycle for this year's event. Uh, utilizing the mass state bid process. And a brief summary of what happened was there was 130 vehicles that, are, that attended, which is about 40% rise from last year. And we had a grand total of 3,679 pounds and, and or gallons of hazardous waste material. Uh, we generally do this twice a year, and it's been very successful in growing each time we do it. So. Uh, we wanted to pass that info information along, that it's a, a, a very good program. Right, thank you, Dan. Uh, Lou, you also have a shout I do, answer? Mr. Chairman. Uh, over the past seven years, the Kraft family and the New England Patriots Foundation have placed a strong emphasis on celebrating volunteerism. Every week throughout the season, the Kraft family and the Foundation present the Patriots Difference Maker of the Week award which recognizes deserving volunteers who go above and beyond to support their local community and their nonprofit organizations. Mike Codburn of Pembroke has been selected as the Patriots Difference Maker of the Week for his volunteer efforts with the Pembroke Titans Against Drugs. As a parent and a volunteer coach, Mike saw the need for education about drug abuse and addiction. Three years ago, he sought out the Pembroke Selectmen, educators, and community groups and formed Pembroke Titans Against <coughs> Drugs. Through this nonprofit, two Pembroke graduating seniors receive the True Titans Scholarship Award each year for promoting the missions and goals of the organization through their community service and their choices during high school. Mike will join 14 other outstanding volunteers for a special in-game ceremony at the Patriots on December 31st in their game against the New York Jets. He will also be featured in the Patriots football weekly newspaper Patriots Game Day magazine and on the Patriots website. Well, I think this is a wonderful tribute to Mike and all the efforts that he has done. And uh, we're all about recognizing our volunteers. So thank you and good luck to Mike. Very good. Very good. Uh, next up on the agenda is. Uh, Joint meeting with the town moderator, advisory committee, uh, about the fall special town meeting. And I would just like to say that um, that this uh, meeting is being made available to the public through a live video 
an audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in the open session will be recorded. So we have town moderator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, appreciate this opportunity to meet with uh, your board and with the advisory committee who has been working behind the scenes, um, as they always do, uh, on every article, not just the financial matters, uh, for months now, um, long before we even start thinking about it. And so I appreciate their, their hard work. Uh, two things I just wanted to mention before we go through, well, three things, actually. One is, as I always say, these meetings are important not to determine uh, an outcome, but just to determine a game plan so that we get to an outcome that everyone can understand and be happy with. All these votes um, are subject to the voters' approval or disapproval uh, or action, and so uh, it's important that they come. Um, I I'm always happy to see large crowds at town meeting. Um, sometimes they show up for individual items, specific you know, articles, specific capital expenditures or whatever, uh, and that's important and we're happy to see them. Um, this may be the, not the most controversial town meeting that we've ever had, but nonetheless it's important. Uh, and the town accountant and others officials will have a stroke if we don't have these uh, the figures uh, finalized uh, by the end of uh, well shortly in order to set the tax rate and close the books and everything else. So uh, there may not be a lot of sexy items on this uh, warrant, but they're nonetheless very important. So we really need people uh, to show up, um, and this should not be a long meeting at all. Um, once again, as you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, the meeting is at seven o'clock next Tuesday, week from tomorrow night at the high school. Um, we are going to have uh, three very short presentations prior to the meeting. Um, as you know, we have some significant capital expenses coming up. Uh, one is a potential request for a new police and or a fire station. Um, uh, we've already purchased the property um, and we funded a building study. Uh, and so the building study committee is going to make, be making a very brief presentation there's no article on the warrant that is associated with that. We're not going to be asked to build or fund anything, but they are going to make a presentation in anticipation of a request for the Springtown meeting. And there's also uh, a, a proposal uh, for a new DPW building as well, facility. And so the DPW, there is an article on the warrant that's associated with that. Um, the DPW is going to have their consultant make a very brief five-minute a presentation just to describe what they will be asking for and we'll, I'm, I'm not sure will be whether it will be next this meeting or the next meeting but uh, they'll be discussing it uh, the decision will be coming up shortly and then Mike Buckley is going to make a brief presentation so if we have a quorum we'll get right into it if we don't have a quorum right away we'll still have the presentations and then hopefully by the end of the presentations we can actually formally start the meeting so the presentations will be very important I think They're very informative um, and so I ask people once again to be there at 7 o'clock so we can start promptly. Um, so as we usually do, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay with you, we'll just go through the articles. Um, they are posted on the town's website. Um, the warrant articles are and hard copies are available <coughs> in town hall. Um, and I know if you don't have it in front of you, for those watching at home, it's a little difficult to follow. follow but. Um, we'll try to go through these as quickly as possible. The first article is uh, transfers um, that, um, and there's a barring authorization to close the books and balance the budgets. And um, it's, oh, this, I'm sorry, this is for capital projects only, uh, right? To fund all capital projects. Some of it includes borrowing, some of it includes transfers. Um, so that will be moved by advisory. Yes. Um, is there any disagreement that we know of on the items that are? Um, the uh, <clears throat> second article is um, another transfer article um, for wages and salaries. Um, I'm guessing that's not controversial when we move by advisory. Yes. Um, article three is uh, to, this is primarily to balance the snow and ice deficit from last year. Um, and um, so I imagine there's no controversy in that, and then we move by advisory and everybody's yes. agreement. And feel free, Mr. Chairman, to stop me if I'm going too fast. Um, no, I'd, I'd just like to say that, that both of the um, advisory and the Board of Selectmen have favorable action on all of those articles that right. you've read so far. I should mention that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Article 4 is to, are we establishing a new fund here or are we just funding? Okay, so we're establishing a workers' compensation insurance fund and funding it and uh, it's recommended favorable action by both advisory and the Board of Selectmen advisory is going to yes. that article. Uh, article 5 um, is to fund an existing fund, correct, uh, relative to separation pay, special injury. Um, that seems not to be controversial. It's recommended favorable action by advisory and selectmen advisory. We'll, we'll move that one. Um, Article 6 is a collective bar to fund the collective bargaining agreement um, with the firefighters, permanent firefighters association. <coughs> um, and are we all in agreement on that? Um, the board of selectmen submitted that article and they will bring it up at uh, John Meade. Is the advisory committee making a recommendation? John Meade floor. Okay. Um, so who, so board of selectmen will move the article? Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I, I'm going fast here. For those listening at home, this is none of this is predetermined. <laughs> this is all up to the voters to decide for, uh, what the rec what the ultimate recommendation is. Um, but we do have a agreed upon contract. Correct. That's right. We, we, okay. Yeah. So, right. Um, Article seven is a special event bylaw proposal by the board of selectmen. Um, this generated a little bit of controversy at the last meeting. It's a different version that's on this warrant. Um, and advisory is... Some have been able to present okay. that. Also. They made a recommendation yet or not yet? Time meeting four. Okay. So uh, selectmen move that article? Yes. Okay. Um, article eight is... Um, to fund uh, the hydrilla control program at Habermock Pond. Uh, everyone seems to be in agreement that will be moved by yes. advisory. Uh, Article 9 is the algae control program at Oldham Pond. Everyone's in agreement. Advisory will move yes. that one. Article 10, um, algae control program at Furnace. Everybody in agreement. Advisory will move that one. Article 11, um, make some changes to the classification and compensation bylaws uh, with regard to an assistant to the town administrator position. Advisory committee will move that one. Which board is like the their article. Okay. Um, do you want to yep. board then we'll move that? Right. No, those other ones, um, 8, 9, and 10, it's also submitted by the board of selectmen, but that advisory is going to we'll, do that? We'll move those very quickly. Unless you want it. Well, that's fine. Why we keep the advisors? Yes, um, And so, Article 11, the um, Schedule A change um, board can move in. Um, yep. And is advisory recommending favorable action? Or yes. Say, okay. Um, Article 12 is uh, one submitted by the DPW. Uh, this would authorize the borrowing of $10 million for a new DPW facility. And I've kind of heard mixed things whether that's, I take it that's not going forward at this point? As far as we know. As far as we know, okay. The commissioners have I heard that they, were, to... that they were going to do the same thing, but I haven't seen anything in writing or anything on it, but I heard that they wanted the same as the fire and police, an opportunity to get up and speak. Uh, right, which they will have. Right. I just don't know whether the articles, well, they're going to move Mr. the article. Mr. Yeah. Bastianel is prepared to move it. They're going to move it. Move no action. Okay. Move. Move no action. Oh, move no action. Okay. Um, I can discuss it with them then. So I, I take it no one's recommending we go ahead with this article in this room. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Article 13 is, uh, this doesn't fund, right? This just allows us to hire two full-time police officers, it am I correct? It just authorizes two more. Right. To, okay, so we've already funded it. Okay, and I've actually spoken to the chief, and he will move that. That's his article, he's going to move it. But advisories in agreement with that? Okay. Uh, article 14 is another amendment to the wage and personnel scale, uh, uh, schedule, I'm sorry, um, submitted by the Recreation Commission uh, Advisory. 
selectmen are in agreement and the advisory move that favorable action? We can, although we have some issues with why they want to change the title. Okay. Uh, well, I'm open to suggestions. Should we ask for the to want to do it? Well, we can, we'll, we'll ask. Okay. Um, Article 15 is to, um, this is the last installment of this <laughs> $5,000 for the, uh, to reimburse the Conservation Commission, as promised. Uh, everybody's in favor? I'm assuming the Advisory Committee will move that article. Okay. Um, article 16 is uh, a change to the Classification and Compensation Bylaws. Um, oh, this is a general change, right? That would allow a part-time worker to be eligible for a step increases of one year as opposed to two. Right. Um, so everyone, selectmen are in agreement. Yeah. Advisory in agreement. Advisory, you want to move that one? Unless Deb wants to bring it because it's her. I'm going to speak for her, and, and she, I, my guess is that she's fine with having you folks yeah. move it. I'll speak to her. I mean, if she wants to, we want to give her the chance. But um, 17 is uh, the community preservation um, rec rec uh, recommendations and requests. I'm sorry, and there's one, two, three of them. So it doesn't any of these controversial. Usually, a Brian Van Riper, who's chairman of the CPC, to move these. So everyone's in agreement. And Mr. Chairman, that's it. Okay. Um, Again, I just urge everyone to come early. Um, we're going to draw either, I think at the end, the winners of the raffle for the little model police and fire cars. And so hopefully we can get over quickly. Yeah, I think you'll find on 14 now, uh, they made an explanation uh, on 14 that um, they're not asking for any money either. Um, they're asking um, uh, for that position or the full time position to be in there because. If they decided not to uh, have somebody work on certain months, they could have another person work as a full-time position. So they can probably explain that when that comes up. Okay. But it's, uh, right. That appears to be okay. I'll ask, um, is the, the um, director, is she a town resident? Yes. Okay, so yeah. we'll touch bases. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Thank you again for the <clears throat> well, we're a little bit early, but um, yeah, we, we um, Take uh, here because the other people aren't here, but uh, I noticed that um, uh, we have an application for a change doing business as Gambino's restaurant uh, from Capone's Prohibition Pizza and Pub to a murder pub and pizzeria. Yes, you, uh, how are you doing? Good, how are you, sir? Good. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, let me give you a, a little introduction. My uh, name is Scott Myers. I'm from Capone's Pizzeria. It's Gambino's Restaurant Incorporated. We do business as um, Capone's. My wife and I started the business in 1988 as a sub and pizza shop. And approximately 12 years later, in approximately 2000, uh, the cellular one store had gone vacant beside us. We moved into there, requested an alcohol license, um, and put a dining room at the bar, which we did in 1999. In 2004, we opened a second location in Weymouth. Uh, branded in the same name. We asked for and received a uh, letter from the Board of Selectmen at the time and the town manager that we had never had a violation and a uh, recommendation for our liquor license, which we obtained and uh, operated that establishment until 2012, which we had then sold. sold. Uh, we, um, to date, since we've been there, we've never had a violation with the town or state or any type of alcohol-related issues. Um, we require all of our bartenders to be tip certified. We hire a dram shop to 
come in once a year to do role playing with our bartenders to handle different situations. We close early, we have a one o'clock license, we close at 11, 12 on the weekends, I'm sorry, 12.45 on the weekends. It's not really about the alcohol, it's about food and beer. And brings me to the reason that we're here. Uh, We've been interested in opening a second location out of the country in Aruba. We vacation there a lot. We were given the opportunity for a location um, that we've been interested in for some, in for some time. Coincidentally, there's an establishment called Sopranos, right where we wanted to open. So it's like a ripoff on their brand. Uh, so we, under much thought and uh, bouncing the idea around, we decided to rebrand um, under Amerta, which goes with the uh, bar. It's like it's a prohibition dining room, like it's hidden behind this uh, pizza, in a pizza shop, as like a speakeasy. So it sort of goes with the secrecy and the, the um, that whole uh, type of thing. We have remodeled completely, new floors, new decorations, new furniture, new paintings. And uh, with that, um, we were asking just to change the DBA. It's Gambino's Wrestling Incorporated, it always has been. We just want, would like to change the DBA to Amerita uh, Pub and Pizzeria. If I may, Chairman, these are copies of the menu. Uh, it's very similar to what we had. We're specializing in some of the things that have been very popular uh, for us. It's still pizza subs, sandwiches, Italian dinners. It's really not a change in the uh, establishment at all. Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Sure. I think I speak for the whole board when I say we'd love to all visit your lo new location down in Aruba. You want to welcome or come? We're looking at 2020 <coughs> of a, um, a location that's available to us. That we're uh, interested in helping. Very excited about it. Our daughter is one of our fire managers. She's worked there uh, on the island for the last four months. She's a Suffolk Law student right now, and she works for us a few nights a week. She's spent the last four months in Aruba working as a bartender at one of the number one places down there. We brought a few cocktails back from Aruba that were very popular down there we'll be offering in our establishment. Awesome. Sounds good. Anybody have any questions or comments? Hearing none, then I need a motion. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to say that uh, all the paperwork that you submitted is before us. Uh, there's no issue with it at all. And I'm sure that uh, most of the board members, I'll speak for myself, are very familiar with your restaurant here at Pembo. So, uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve the application of Tina Myers of Gambino's Restaurant, Inc. for a change of doing business as from Capone's Prohibition Pizzeria and Pub to Omerta Pub and Pizzeria on license number 0049-RS-0960 exercised at 254 Church Street. We have a second? Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank yeah. you very much, gentlemen. Oh. Okay. Okay. Good, Good luck, both of you in a row. Yeah. Drinks on me when you guys come back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Uh, the record shows she said that after we took the vote. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Graham around? Yes. There he is. We're looking for you every week here. <laughs> We've heard some good things about you tonight by a uh, former, uh, not a former, one of our uh, selectmen here. Oh, good. That uh, already uh, uh, took, took, your, took, your took your advice. Oh, good. I'm glad. Thank you. So, did you already get so, an audit? The contractor has been in, has had an audit, and they're sending in the insulator in uh, a week from Friday. Awesome. Oh, just, just so the people know, this is Christopher Graham from Graham Built Corporation. 
solicitation permit request and he's before the board tonight on an application for a door-to-door -door solicitation permit and um, he has not specified any duration or hours for the request. Um, previous, previous permits have been approved for 11 to 7.30 on Monday through Friday and 9 to 3 on Saturday and Sunday for a period of 90 days. Is that, is that something that you'd be? Yes, yes, that sounds perfect. Okay. Uh, I don't imagine we'd go out after dark, but. Um, you satisfied all the core requirements uh, and the selectman's office has forwarded the chief of police's application and presentation for the next uh, permitting step, which includes a comprehensive background check with final uh, permit to be issued by the chief of police. So um, tell us a little bit about your business. And um, So I work in the Mass Save program and uh, we have six vans, sometimes uh, up to 16 employees. And we've grown substantially and would like to continue to do so and have better control over it. I feel a good way to do that would be by uh, marketing and explaining what the program does. There's over 100 contractors that work in the program currently, and we're a tier one contractor. We get rated by the work that we do. So there's actually an outside inspector that comes to inspect the work. There's another inspector that comes to inspect the inspector. They don't come to every single job, but they do go to, I'd say, 80%. The, the second inspector goes to maybe 20% of the jobs or so. They also give a customer a uh, little survey to fill out was the crew on time, were they neat, were they professional, did they explain what they were doing, and uh, we're a tier one contractor. Actually about five years ago I made a recommendation to Mass Save that they make a higher tier than the tier one, they just did that this year. I'm happy to uh, say that we're in that tier, it has a 9.75 rating, it's an A plus tier. And um, they send us a lot of work and we, we've been in the program for over five years now. We're the one contractor out of the 100 plus contractors that work in the program that just specialize in doing air sealing only. And all the work through the Mass Save program that we do is at no cost to you. I wouldn't say the word free because the way the program is funded is that every single month when you pay your utility bill, a certain percentage of your bill has a, a spot where they take some of the money out of the bill and allocate it towards the Mass Save program. And, uh, we've enjoyed working in this program where. Uh, we're able to help customers on a daily basis save money in their homes and besides saving money they're more comfortable and it's also good for the environment so it's very rewarding in that sense the work that we actually do and most of you are probably wondering what is air sealing and that's a really great question so uh, what we do when we show up to a home is that uh, we exchange pleasantries put on our booties put on uh, install a drop cloth and run a blower door test the blower door test depressurizes the inside of the home at 50 pascals, that's a measurement of air movement. We record the results from that test. After we're done doing that, actually, excuse me, before we do that, we run a combustion safety test, so we test your heating equipment to make sure that it doesn't backdraft and combust it efficiently. We record the results from that test. If it passes that test, then we'll proceed to the blower door test. And the blower door test is a uh, big metal fan that gets installed right at your front door, and it has a metal frame with fabric that goes around it, and it connects to, computer, to a little computer that, uh, measures the speed that the home is de being depressurized at and how much air is going through the fan. We record that number and then we start doing our work. What our work entails doing is crawling around up in the attic, falling along wall tops, wire penetrations, and along chimneys. What this does is it's gonna reduce the amount of air cycles that happen inside your home. When you do that, your heating equipment won't come on or your cooling equipment won't come on as often. When that happens, it makes two really great things or two really cool things happen. One would be the occupant saves money and becomes more comfortable in their own home because the heating system doesn't have to come on or the cooling system doesn't have to come on as often. So uh, that's really the uh, meat and potatoes of what we do. Before we're done, we uh, install weather strips and door sweeps. That's typically what most customers vocalize to their friends and family members and neighbors that we did with weather, uh, weather strips and door sweeps. But the real meat and potatoes is the air sailing. Your insulation really is ineffective if air is going through it. It acts more like a, a filter than an actual insulation material. So uh, this is really helpful to reduce the expenses of you know everybody's utilities over the winter and summer and keep people more comfortable. And uh, we really enjoy doing it because the customers don't have to pay us any money. Typically, it's all at no cost and funded 100% through the utilities, which we work with in the Mass Save program. 
you guys have any questions about the NASA program or anything that I mentioned? I know I went through it pretty fast. And no, I've actually had it. Before, I've actually had them at my house before, and okay. uh, they they um, they did a great job, and um, actually found that I was really needed a lot of insulation up in my attic, and they you know replaced a lot of insulation up in there, and uh, actually it did save me money. So good, I'm oh, wow. happy about that. So when you think about it from a, a daily standpoint, how much would you pay per day to be more comfortable? And this is basically a program that you pay already. I scrutinized my utility bill the other day, and ours is really expensive, but uh, it was $50 a month that I pay in the Mass Save program. So I was happy that uh, we did get insulation work done as well through the Mass Save program earlier this year, and mm. look forward to taking advantage of it again. Because uh, every couple of years, the program changes. Before they used to give out the CFL carbon fluorescent light bulbs, now they give out the LEDs. Uh, just do different things like now they ins they have uh, duct sealing in the program so if you have metal duct work in your attic we can go there and seal it and insulate it and uh, that'll help obviously get the heat of the cooling thing. They change the thermostats as yeah, well. Yeah, they change the thermostats yep. as well. Yep. Yep. There's a ton of stuff under the Mass Safe program so I just want to let people know about it and that's why I put the application in to do the door-to-door -door solicitation. And uh, primarily work in neighborhood or do the door to door in neighborhoods that we've already been working in. It's just an easier sell to say that we've worked in this neighborhood. Awesome. But, but there's no actual physical sale. Does anybody cool. have any questions? I'd just like to say uh, for the record that uh, I'm very familiar with energy audits. I've had one down in my house, and uh, I have no. X to grind with the applicant. I don't know. I don't know his business, but uh, I will not vote for doing a door solicitation. Yeah. Well, we we'll cancel each other out because I will. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think everybody here knows Chris. He's a member of the Chamber of Commerce. He's a good yeah. business. They're up on Route One Thirty Nine, and um, it, the whole lot of, and all the changes they made cost me twenty two dollars. Oh my gosh, really? That's going to be awesome. That was worth it. Yes. Yeah, the jury's still out on the heat because we haven't had to turn it on yet. All right. But um, if nobody's um, got any more issues to go over, I would move to approve the application of Christopher Graham on behalf of Graham Bill Corporation for a door-to-door -door solicitation permit authorizing sales from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Monday through Friday and from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. License eligible for renewal on its expiration date of January 16, 2018, subject to the approval and permit card issuance by the Chief of Police. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so open for discussion. The only thing I wanted to add in here is that um, I, too, was, was um, just like Lou, really didn't care particularly for door-to-door -door salesmen uh, banging on my door, but but um, um, the town voted in October uh, 2016 to, a, to adopt a door-to-door -door solicitation bylaw. And in that bylaw, you have to abide by that bylaw from what the police chief tells you and what, if somebody doesn't want um, to be solicited at their place, then they call and put their name on the list and um, and everybody that does get a door-to-door -door solicitation permit has to abide by that. Um, so I've kind of changed my views a little bit about door-to-door -door salesmen because if I if I don't want them, that's all I have to do is call and say I don't, you know, I don't want somebody banging on my door. And uh, so if they do come bang on my door, then they're going to have a problem. <laughs> so it's it's um, um, you could either put a sign out in front of your door or your house or. Or just put your name on a list, and uh, I'm sure the chief will give you that list or whatever when it when it comes time to do the door-to-door -door salesman. So, uh, other than that, um, any other questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Opposed. So, so it'll be four to one. So, so you got your permit. Thank so, you guys very much for your time. I appreciate it. Just uh, see the chief, and uh, you'll be all set. Thanks for that, Tim. Okay. Yes, no, no, I right. just took advantage of the yeah, program. Okay. Good to see you again. Good. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, we need a 
a vote to proclaim uh, Friends of the Pembroke Public Library Week October 15th to October 21st. <coughs> Move favorable action by the Board of Selectmen. Anybody have any questions or comments? The uh, proclamation is on the second part of the page yet. It seems like a great program to me and hope they raise a lot of money. Awesome. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Five to zero. Yeah, so very good. Uh, we need a vote to transfer $3,000 from Camp Pembroke Fund to the uh, strategic planning. Town, the uh, town administrator has requested it. I would move favorable action by the Board of Select. Second. Any questions or comments? The date that this is uh, going to be done, I believe, is in February. November. Oh, it's November. In 2012, it was held in February. Uh, oh, okay. Once there's a commitment, we're going to get some dates in November later in the month. Okay. So is this going to be a presentation? Um, yes, it'll be a two-day uh, seminar put on on a Thursday for department heads and a Saturday for boards, committees, commissions, and members of the public. They'll take a survey. They'll discuss issues before the town and talk about financial strategy. So, okay. And and what what's the three thousand dollars for? What is it's that? It's going to fund the Suffolk University's Moakley Center for Public Management's time preparation, compilation, presentation. Oh, okay. And All right. The town will get okay. A awesome. Good. Okay. So we have a a motion and a second. Uh, does anybody else have any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Very good. Uh, you people here from the ski? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So we get a couple of minutes. Um, you're on at 7.40, but as long as you don't mind coming a little, a few minutes early, Whatever, we'll put you on uh, now then. Come on up, gentlemen. Come on up. Um, so you're, you are... I'm Reed, the store manager. I was down here last uh, year, same uh, type of event we got going on again this year. Okay. From 296 Old Oak Street? You got it. And you're requesting a special liquor <coughs> license for the annual two-day event to be held on November 4th and 5th? The event actually runs Friday, but we were just uh, requesting the license for the Saturday and Sunday there. Okay. Um, and this is the, your annual ski and snowboard tent sale? Exactly. Okay. Pretty much the same event we held last year, uh, only noteworthy changes. We have a little bigger tent we'll put up this year. Okay. Pretty good last year, and hopefully continue to uh, keep building the event. And appreciate the town's support very much to that end. Okay. okay. Anybody have any questions or comments? So, what kind of products are you going to be selling in the tent? Uh, we usually put all just apparel out in the tent, the ski, uh, jackets, pants, that sort of um, stuff. We actually conduct all the transactions inside the store still, but uh, that's what will be out there. And the inside is devoted toward the uh, skis, boots, bindings, snowboards, that type of thing. I think we'll have a little patio furniture outside as well as our summertime offering at the ski shop. Very nice. Yep, mm. a couple things to sit on in the way. Uh, anybody want to make a motion? I would uh, move to grant the one-day liquor license of Reed Almendinger of Sun and Ski for the sale of beer and wine on November 4th, 2017 from 12 to 6, <coughs> uh, 12 to 10 rather, p.m. on November 5th from 12 noon to 6 p.m. at 296 Old Oak Street. Uh, second. Second. I would just add that they've been a good business in town for a number of years and they um, are very responsible and will uh, do a good job. Is that where you get your ski board? 
<laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I have a uh, yeah. kayak that I yeah. bought many years ago before they were even in town. I think. Do, you, do you use the kayak to go down the hills in the snow? No, but that's a good suggestion, actually. <laughs> <laughs> People do apparently do that. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Five to zero. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate your time this evening. Have a good time. I'll try to stop by there and see uh, everything. Don't say hello anytime. Don't know where to find us. Okay. Okay. Yeah, build a hill next to your house. It'd be a good one to go down. Well, we used to go down that, right down from the top of my house, down the side stairs, down the other stairs, and we had to have somebody on the road down below to to watch the cars coming by and would open up the gate to the beach and go right out down that hill out onto the out onto the uh, pond in the winter when it was frozen. Yeah, I'm a little old with that now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd try it now, but uh, <coughs> we need to make a nominee for the old colony MPO as a member. Uh, Selectman Dan Chubuco serves as a representative to the old colony planning council with the alternate member, Dean Taylor, of the planning board. And attached, please find a request from the OCPC to nominate an elected member of the Board of Selectmen to serve on the Old Colony Metropolitan Planning Council. Mr. Chairman, I think it's very evident to me and uh, quite obvious to all of us that uh, Dean Tribuco is the right person to take the position and he should have our entire support because he has been the alternate for many years prior to the loss of Jerry Dempsey and he took the seat uh, on the OCPC uh, shortly thereafter and has done a terrific job and has kept us well informed and I think he do a great job for the uh, county as well. Awesome. There was a second. <laughs> second. <coughs> I appreciate that. Kind words. Thank you, Arthur. Um, well, anybody have anything to say before we take a vote? Well, I'll just say that the uh, this is a nomination for the Metropolitan Planning Organization uh, as a member, and my name goes in the hat with eight other communities that are over 14,000, so it's uh, uh, it's still a competitive uh, race to become the member, uh, but this is the first step. Awesome. Okay. I'd like to see you on there. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Uh, five to zero. Very good. Need to vote a, to sign a deed to convey parcel B2-3115 on Butler Street as voted at the annual town meeting May 9th, 2017. This is a quick claim deed that we need to approve. I would move that the um, T be signed by the Board of Selectmen. Second. Okay, move to execute a uh, quick claim deed for the conveyance of assessors possible B23115, Bartlett Street as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Anybody Aye. opposed? Aye. None, back to zero. Very good. Need a vote to accept the minutes of October 2nd, 2017. Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board accept the minutes of the selectmen's meeting dated October 2nd, 2017, as written. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Very good. And we also have. Um, Okay, so we do have record of approved bills for October 11th. Um, on October 11th, uh, I'm pleased to report that I personally reviewed 12 accountable payable warrants totaling $930,508.98. And two payroll warrants totaling two hundred eleven thousand eight hundred and sixty two and sixteen cents prepared by the town accountant and authorized the itemized expenditures for payment. Give me a second. So moved. So moved. 
All those in favor of accepting that? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Awesome. Okay, do we have anything for yes, the selectman? Um, Lou didn't, it, um, Ed didn't give you anything to talk about for no. uh, administrators. Okay, anything for yes, the selectman? Anything on the new business? Um, Can we go back to old business for a minute? Yeah, I didn't see the old business there, but um, I do have something on the old business. I want to go ahead, Arthur. Okay. I just I asked a couple of weeks ago for an update on the Board of Health legal bills because we've had one member of the Board of Health um, basically abusing the office. It's about the only phrase I can think of. The Board of Health in 2015, calendar year 2015, spent exactly no dollars on the um, legal side of uh, their expenses. In calendar year 2016, it went up to $8,302. And from January 1st of 2017 through September 1st, and we all know that that's going to be light because September 1st is when a lot of other things took place. But that was just $10 short of $10,000. Basically, it's um, about $18,000 up until September 1st of this year. And it's basically money that's been flushed down the toilet because we've had to bring in our legal team to handle things that have been created by a person who's trying to use the office as a vindictive uh, form of government. And um, I just think the public should be aware of the fact that they don't necessarily need legal help in most cases, but we've spent, as I said, eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars in legal fees in the last year and a half, and I think it's just an awful waste, and I think it needs to be pointed out. Okay. Um, the only other thing I, that I wanted to bring up was that um, we did send a letter to the uh, city of Brockton. Um, and we also sent copies to Central Plymouth County Water District Commission, um, the Mayor of Brockton, uh, Brockton City Council, Division of Marine Fisheries, State Representative Josh Cutler, the State Senator Vinnie DiMacito, Vinnie DiMacito in regards to uh, pretty much of a demand letter from us to Brockton indicating that they should be working better with uh, Brad Chase from the Division of Marine Fisheries and also the Pembroke Fisheries Commission to um, stop any diversion of fish into Silver Lake. Unfortunately, I talked to Brad Chase today. He was he was um, on his way on a flight somewhere, and uh, he told me that he just assigned some people to Silver Lake to investigate um, a fish kill down there, and from what they've found out so far is that it was all a bunch of uh, juvenile heron. And he doesn't know whether it's from last year or from this year, but so we'll find out what that is. But um, the city of Rockton has to step up here and take care of um, and help out with this diversion pipe, um, allowing fish to, to get in there um, to help. With the problem down there, um, the Pembroke Fisheries went down and strung a net down there the other day. Um, a couple of guys, we bought our own net and put it down there because we don't want to see that. And Brockton has agreed not to divert um, anything until after we give them the okay, um, that it's okay to divert. Um, so we are making some progress on that, but um, there's um, hopefully the city of Brockton sees it that um, that they you know they're going to want to work with uh, both us and the division in order to straighten this problem out. So they have a right to take the water, but they don't have a right to take the fish with it. And uh, and unfortunately, if the fish go there, they never come back out. So they're either food for other fish or we lose them. So so we're on top of that anyway. So. Mr. Chairman, yes. Could I just make a comment about? Uh, Selectman's Boyle's report on legal expenditures for the Board of Health. We all know that when you need a lawyer, you need a lawyer. But lawyers cost money. And $18,000 for 
is a lot of money when we're looking at every dollar we can get for many improvements of personnel that we believe that the town needs. And um, I'm hoping that after the next big event we have here is town meeting a week from tomorrow night. But I think when the town administrator returns to work and after the town meeting is over, uh, I'd like to have another discussion about this issue. It all revolves around what can we do about it. I don't know what we can do about it. But I think rather than just letting this go after spending eighteen to nineteen thousand, uh, I don't think we should do that. So I just like to revisit the issue and what possible actions we can take to avoid additional expenditures. Thank you. Thank okay. you. We can actually put that on the agenda for um, October thirty. Yes. Uh, we do have some <coughs> upcoming issues. Uh, again, October 24th is the uh, special town meeting. October 30th, 7 p.m., there's a swearing-in ceremony at the Pembroke, um, Pembroke Police Officers. Um, to be determined, there's a quarterly meeting with the advisory committee. Um, And is there a need to go into executive session? Yes, there is, Mr. Chairman. I would move the board goes into executive session to discuss the possible discipline of the town employee and the possible resolution of the same. We would be coming back out into open session to make any no, comments. There is no need to return into open session after the executive session. If we make an agreement in the executive session, do we need to do that publicly afterwards? No, we do not. We do not. Okay. Okay, by roll call and uh, we vote to go into executive session. Uh, oh, no. There was a second, right? I'll I second didn't hear. It. Second that. Yes. Yes. Arthur? Yes. Right. Yes. And yes. So um, that will conclude tonight's meeting of the uh, Pembroke Board of Selectmen. Or October 16th, we're going into executive section, session, and there'll be no need to come out of executive session to discuss any other matters uh, at this time. So, um, we'll I guess. Strictly for adjournment purposes. Yeah, just to uh, adjourn. So, um, just like to say Halloween is coming, uh, fall is coming, the, the, um, the trees and everything look really nice. There's, uh, some good chilly mornings coming up, and uh, so have a good week, and we'll see you next week.